Daniel, can you hear me? Uh, Derek, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit faint, but I can hear you. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me all right? Is that a true? We can yeah. hear you, Megan. Great. All right. No. Winching up. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Oh, is that another one? That is another cucumber. That one wow. seems to be a little bit longer than the last one. Wow. So are you just going to hold her in one place while we do the I'll, test? I'll probably set, I think the best idea is probably set her down. Um, yeah, yeah that, make, that sounds the safest. And uh, yeah, get in a position, feel comfortable. And are, then. Uh, are we going to want to bring out Alanta down towards the bottom? Uh, I'm not sure. Do if, if that's the case, I think we should string the tether out. So you should probably yeah. get way behind us. Okay. If, if that's the if case. that's the idea, if we want because we want to get a view of the bottom, then yeah. Yeah, we may want to test that. So yeah, so that makes sense. Probably string Atlanta all the way out. Um. Yeah, Tito, I think you'd like to see, you know, if possible and where you're comfortable, kind of what this looks like anywhere from a sorry a del an altitude of 25 to 10. Megan, you're a little faint. Okay. Uh, where are they at? I'm in Studio One, and uh, Emil's in Studio Two. Copy. So you'd like to see... Yeah, we'd like to see, when we get lights off, kind of what an altitude, you know, see what we can see, but maybe if it's safe, get down to an altitude as low as 10 meters. Okay. So we should string out Hercules, um, the downslope direction. Right, and then have Atalanta be closer to the um, to the yeah. right, the slope. That makes sense. <clears throat> so I'm gonna bring my heading around to the north and, and drive out the tether that way. Okay. We don't have a ship move on, right? We do actually. Okay. It's just very slow. It's zero point two. Okay. Well, we're gonna want to probably go. All, we're gonna want to go all stop. I think when yeah. we do this on the ship. Do you want to call that in now? Yeah, we should yeah. We call it in now. Do this test. Okay. Bridge nav. We could uh, have an all stop, please. Thank you. You know, we'll want to get confirmation we have, like, both vehicles have each other in the sonar before we go, if we're going to go lights out. I don't know, if we're, if we're stretched out, though, we might not have to go lights out on Hercules. But. And Tori, when we get into this test, uh, can you log a Atalanta highlight for us so that we'll have it uh, captured? Yeah, of course. I awesome. will start okay. looking on that now. Thank you. Stretched out, come up a bit. We could actually probably maintain visual the whole time. With just I think you know. we do want your lights off, though. Okay. We will want your lights off, yes. Yeah. And should I start bringing Atalanta down? Uh, let's hold off till we get. Uh, my preference. Sure, I've got about 24 meters of altitude right now. 24. Nice. Um, I'm going to. Let me check one thing while we're sitting up here. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to record the Argus GUI because I don't have altitude in my. Uh, Captioning. Unless you want to pull that from the log, Megan. Um, I think the log will be okay. Okay. Thank you. Pilot, uh, 
really that far up? 36 meters? Yeah, I drove, yeah, okay. drove back, back sl down slope. So we're going to have, do you want to be on the seafloor or no? No, we're going to stay You're stretched out. Okay. You should be Off able to use the um, her butt cam to keep track of Atlanta. Yep. Uh, All right. I, when we go to the lights, let's do them slowly, one bank at a time, and I'll crank in some gains. So at least we've got some pixels. I'm in uh, auto altitude and auto heading, and then I'll just stick in a little forward way. That sounds great. Thanks, Jake. Let us know when you're feeling stable there. Just want to see the tether stretched fully out again. Mm -hmm. We're in a good configuration. Yep. Okay, great. Um, Tori, if you want to just kind of continue logging highlights throughout this, there are a couple minutes that'll stitch together, and then I think we're ready for. Take Kirk Dark. Light, yep. Her Let's go one light. bank at a time if we could. Awesome, thanks, right. Megan. Starboard port. Go uh, down lights. And Jake, just a suggestion, but you might put a little stick lock on forward. He did. Oh, I did. I did. Roger yep. that. Yeah. Uh, then, yeah uh, there is definitely something going on with that camera. We're going to reboot the camera anyway. Uh, let me do it. Uh, mid lights. Yeah, oh, I wow. can't put any gain in, so that's not going to matter at all. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. You want me to switch this camera to bars? Uh, sure, that would be great. Yeah. Or it's got lasers Actually, on. I'm, it's not gonna. I'm betting I cannot. Okay. But let's try it. Yep. I got a dead controller. Alright. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, that's 23. Tito, as you're ready and safe, do you want to. Uh, lower the altitude. Okay, and, and let uh, me just look at this camera real quick. Ready. All right, I'm okay. uh, seeing anything from 24 to 27. Uh, you uh, stand what's going to be our lowest? Uh, the video? Do you need to wait? Uh, there. Yeah, let me uh, switch my configuration over here. All right, I'm heading down slowly. So I've got iris all in manual I all the way I open. Yeah, bottom in sight. What's our altitude? 24 meters. Oh, well, okay. Have, um... Peter, I think you asked for the lowest, I'd say the floor is 10, please. 10 meters, roger that. That Atalanta and Herc Sonar right there. And that's around 20. Okay. Roger, 20. Um, I don't really have a focus indicator at all. Maybe there. Yeah, I'd say so too.
Yeah, and that's right around 15. 15. Roger. Okay. video just making sure I understand this is iris all the way all the way up all the way open and okay. I'm trying uh, yeah that's and that's why it blew out there and we're right around 10 I'm seeing yep. anywhere from 8 to 12 with the heave I'm okay. gonna iris down a little bit that is low enough thank you yeah. and I'm trying to uh, Hello. man just hold there for I'm gonna go I can't manually move the iris fast enough I'm gonna go to auto iris See how that does on a heave. Yeah, it's quite a bit better than I thought. Yeah, I think so too. Is, that, uh, is our that lighting the configuration? Duty? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Totally fixed, or could, is that something we can modify? Nope, by? it's locked. I'm going to try auto iron. We can or, auto add iris lighting. for a second. I think it's going to go dark. We've I'll talked about right that back. the last couple of days. Okay. This is auto iris. Yeah, I think you could certainly make out big features with this. So if we get another good dip, it should compensate automatically. I think I'm good. Yeah. Is that a big enough heave ed to get the data you're looking for? Uh, or would you like to hold still? It'd be nice if we got one similar to what we had at the beginning. I mean, a little unnerving, but still. There we go. There's one. Yeah. yeah, I think it's better in auto. Just the velocity is such that it's difficult for you to ride the control fast enough. Sure. Okay. If you're good, video, we are good. You can go lights back on and. Back. Yeah, I think I'd actually like this. Well, we can go lights on first. I want to cycle power to Herc Zeus. Or, yeah. Okay. Uh, lights on? Uh, I think we're good there, right? Science? Yeah, it should be. Yeah. Yep. All right, light's coming on. Thank you, team, for letting us in Thank you, guys. Watch. Yeah, thanks much. Sure thing. Uh, you know, we didn't play with the angle of the dangle there, but... <laughs> uh, the, the way the camera's point, how far down the camera's pointed. Do you want me to look up? Yeah, maybe. Do you want to try that real quick? I mean, That's about 45 there. Yep. Oh, uh -oh. it's running away from me. That's like 20... 40, That's about 45. 45 degrees there. Okay. Hope that's helpful. That is, thank you. Do you want to try any zoom with that? Oh, man. It's, yeah, we can zoom. It's just going to accentuate the movement. Sea cucumber. <laughs> so that little jitter is what you're talking about, right? The loose yeah. Bracket or on the on the heave, yeah. So that could be improved, uh, it, sounds yeah. like. Yeah, definitely that could be improved. The big movement, nothing you can do. Right. 
Just focus hunting now. Yeah, sure. Mm. And let's really go crazy. Yeah. Uh, that is full zoom. That's full zoom? Okay. Yep. This is where viewers can experience some seasickness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's an interactive experience. Yeah, <laughs> Okay. The full I think that shows experience. us what, what we need. We can go full wide again. Yeah. Oh, uh, there's not much range here. Or it's a super snappy zoom. Okay. Yeah, I think. All right, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Did that run away or did you tilt I, it I, down? I tilted okay. it down. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Um, I do want to reboot uh, the camera though on Perk. Okay. Yeah, thanks so much. Ready for that whenever. Yeah, I'll proceed it well. Alright, so I'm going to move Perk back to the front, normal. Yep. yep. Alright, I'm coming up. Uh, 2023-09-07, Tango 14. Do you want me to resume ship movement or wait till you're back? Uh, resume, uh, wait till we're, we're back in the good, good setup. Yeah, if you want to go ahead and cycle power whenever. All right, cycling power. Camera's off. Coming back up. <clears throat> All right. Gonna try to switch to bars real quick. Yeah, I have no control. Gonna try uh, adding some gain. I have no control. We got a comms issue with uh, the camera. I think I can still change iris. Yeah. That'll need to be addressed. Okay. So watch lead, this is nav. Still uh, lens control. Just for general awareness, on high pack, you can see where waypoint one is, yep. top of the screen, so yep. we didn't make a whole lot of headway last watch, just for uh, cognizance of time and what we want to cover. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, they probably weren't even on bottom until like the last hour of their watch, given after launch and all that, is my guess. Um, so they probably didn't have a ton of time. I, th I think I mean, we could maybe up it to maybe point three. Okay. Just move a little, a little quicker. Yeah. Sounds good. How's the camera, Ed? Uh, it's okay for the dive. I can only do iris. I have no other controls. Okay. You want me to try cycling power again? No, or? they had the issue at the start of the dive. Oh, really? So okay. we can't white balance. Uh, we can't add gain. All right. Uh, get through the menus. No, it's like the controller. Pretty good setup now, Derek. Okay. Call in and move then. Cool. Thank you. Yep. I might restart my controller while you're powered on, so. Okay. Fingers Bridge crossed. Now. 
If we could resume movement and track a line at bearing 192 at 0 0.3 knots. Yes, thank you. Still virus control. And now put in gains. I could probably white balance, but we'll keep keep going with this preset. Another critter. Can we get a close up on that one? It looks like it has some kind of spiky look to it. Sure thing. Let's do it. Look at this spiky critter. I'm oh, sorry. Doing engineering notes over here. This one looks different than the last sea cucumber. Sea pig? Sea cucumber is going to have a very wide set of morphology, especially in the deep sea. Whoa. This one is more akin to what we would normally call a seat pig. Good for, good for zoom. Yeah, going in. There oh, it goes. <laughs> yep, I would definitely define this guy as very similar to a seat pig. So usually seat pigs have fewer, larger of those little mm. long appendages. Any M. But this guy has a lot of them. That's a really cool one. I like this one a lot. <laughs> it looks like one of those like stress balls or like <laughs> yeah. spiky oh, balls. Oh yeah, or like a cush ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like little ones you squeeze at the oh, yeah. tourist yeah. attraction. So it looks like legs at the bottom, they look a little bit thicker, but like what's mm. going on on top and like all around? What are these, are they tentacles? Um, I wouldn't define them as tentacles because tentacles have a very specific connotation. I would, I would call, probably call these um, just plain appendages. Uh -huh. um, based off the size differences, I have a feeling the topmost and the side ones are for detecting conditions in the surroundings around them. The bottom ones are most likely their tube feet, which they use to get around. Um, I'm trying to decide which side is the front and which side is the back. I'm <laughs> assuming the smaller end is the front. <laughs> the bigger end is back. Um, they and also have a set of two feet that around their mouths that usually allow them to kind of pull in the sediment that they're processing. I'm very glad to see a lot more sea cucumbers on this dive so far. Yeah. Compared to the last sea mount, there was none. This kind of implies to me that sediment around here in the marine snow is pretty, probably mostly more nutritious than the last sea mount that we're on. So hopefully this is a good indicator that we'll see more sediments feeders and deposit feeders as we move forward. Yay! All right, picking up. I see Coming some out. like kind of lines in the sediment. Is that maybe like a path of where creatures like move in or is that just like the sediment is moving because of current? And with those little lines you see, I am more inclined to say those are from the critters. Um, sea cucumbers, as they process the sediment, they don't digest the sediment, they just process it through for all the detritus and nutrients inside of it, mm -hmm. then excrete it in lines as they move across the seafloor. Oh. So that is probably what you're seeing, or there are other smaller organisms making those paths. Yeah, there's but other lines. You see a little fork right there, yeah. for instance. Oh. So, Very so. indecisive econoderm. Yes. <laughs> so I see like two lines next to each other. Is that like two kinoderms? Um, from that fork I saw, I yeah. looked, for me that kind of interpreted as somewhat one making a line and another one kind of intersecting into it and just following the path they had. Oh. Interesting. Okay, um, I have a ship to shore at five o'clock, so I'm gonna pop off of here and try okay. and go get ready for it. Yeah. And at like 5.30, I should be back. Okay, Alrighty. See you in a bit, Tori. See ya. Have a fun time. Zoom in on that. No, they, is that a ledge or is that something? What? Where, Where? black kind of line right there? Oh, no, that's a ledge. Ignore me. 
We don't zoom in on ledges. Yeah, uh, actually we do. I have it. I have it. Thanks. Tripod oh, fish. A fish? Fish. It looks like a tripod fish. Is this thing on? Oh, that's cool. Mm, I'm going to see if I can get a still of it. It's still there. I thought by matching the morphology of a normal tripod fish, but I, let's get a little bit closer to when we get a chance. It is uh, good for zoom. Hello there. Yep, that is a tripod fish. That's it has cool. a little bit different colored fins than I'm usually used to seeing. It's a cool looking one. So it's these so guys still. use their bottom fins there to kind of prop themselves up. Makes allows them to kind of wait for things to swim by and for them to catch it. I think these guys both eat to try this and prey on other animals. It looks like it has whiskers. Yeah, that's yep. what I, I think there's something um, parasite. I think, yeah, or just like a piece of something like drifted into it while it's been sitting there. Um, Does that look like a twig or something? Those little whiskers or? That's part of the body, I believe. Like those there's. little whiskers. Oh. That's those not look part like of part of the body. That's that, not part of him. The uh, little whiskers. Yeah, there's one on the other side. Look at the oh, other side. Are, yeah, oh, yeah wow, those are for using for detecting stuff in oh, the water yeah. column. For Sensing wow. and. That looked like just something that had drifted into it. Wow. That's. And you, it's, like, it's like an extension of the gills or something. Um, I think it's more likely fins. They're very altered mm. fins. Because um, a lot of them have the rays, so what happens most likely with this is that those are the rays of the fins, just without the webbing. If I'm going to postulate on this. I'm not fish, as a big um, fish, so I'm not as educated, but those do look like rays to me that have just been altered. Yeah. And the color seems a bit unusual, that kind of purplish blue. I haven't seen a lot of that. Blazers in here. Oh, do you want the green? You want yeah, the, the snail trail? trail? I yeah, we can do snail trail. Is. You want it? Do you know what that oh, oh, button is? Yeah, I'm you had to say that, huh? Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I heard you. reset first. Okay. Let's do that. He's shy. He yeah. doesn't want to be seen. He's probably like, oh, too much light. Yeah. Um, ruining my stalking. <laughs> Our RV, RV team, whenever you're good to move on. Doing some navigation work up here. Trail source. So with this second dive, we're about 100 miles, nautical miles, northwest of Manavai one of our atolls in Papahanao Mokuakea. The name Manavai means warped, depressed, or bent in, which provides the imagery of the spiritual process of bending inward to reveal the unchanging nature of one's true undying spirit. It can also be defined as branching water. Vai can also refer to Wai or Vailua or spirit. Another name for this atoll is Holoikauawa, which is actually the name that celebrates that the Hawaiian monk seals that haul out and rest here. So Holoikauawa directly relates to the word ilio, Holoikauawa, which literally translates to the quadruped running in the rough seas. Manawai is a true atoll that is primarily underwater and has numerous islets, seven of which are above sea level. The atoll is ever-changing with islets emerging and subsiding. And that's one of our atolls in Papahanao Mokuakea Marine National Monument. Some of these, I'm really curious. I, I feel like these, these rocks are not like some nodule sized ones. Yeah, I don't quite have a grasp on what would be a, a cobble from the like volcanic rock versus a nodule. I think it's just really hard for me to tell if they're stuck or, I mean, those look obviously like not stuck. Are you saying stuck? Like, 
part like like attached. Loose. Yes. Yeah. No, those look yeah. loose. Oh, but but I think they're I think they're tumble down slope, not anything else. Okay. I'm just not sure what a nodule yeah, looks I, like compared to a, a cobble of rock. From my experience with nodules, they work in a deep sea lab, but for focusing on deep sea mining studies, um, nodules don't look as angular. They're pretty round. Yeah. Um, they don't look like they've been ch chipped off of something. So if yeah. that helps, hopefully you guys can make a better ID. Yeah, it, it's just size-wise, it's really hard for me to... To like, like estimate. Yes. Um, well, the green, two green lights in the center, that's about 10 centimeters. Yeah. So I'm bad at spatial stuff in person, but a nodule is typically the size of somewhere between a baseball and a grapefruit. Yeah. Well, great. And the reason why we're looking for um, pohaku or rock samples is to better understand the structure, age, and volcanic history of pick. the region here. Oh, yeah. Same species from before. Yeah. There's a lot less uh, biology, at least at this depth, than last dive. Um, I'm probably going to say that's due to the sediment and nature of these slopes. Yeah. And they need some pretty exposed rock for things like corals and sponges to kind of get grass. And what is that guy? Is that, that just a question like What? In a Ritigorgia? Oh. No. Or is that a jellyfish? I can't tell in the depth. I think it's attached. Looks like it has a stalk. Yeah, it's definitely a coral. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's not a stalk. Yeah, yeah, it's a firework oh. coral. Skinny. Can we go zoom in, please? Sure. This guy's super thin. Go for zoom in. No. Oh, no. Yeah. It's got all sorts of little things attachments. On it. Friends. Mm -hmm. I'm leaning oh. towards Christ and Gorgia. Still partial. It's super. That's probably the thinnest one I've ever seen. I don't know. <laughs> might not be super healthy. That might be the reason. Oh, okay. nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can see like some of the polyps have been kind of arms and been torn off. Is One of really these bad? little things right here on top are some kind of parasite. I don't know. Uh, any signs of shore have some insight here? That's a good shot there. This appears to be, no, that's, it is a hex coral, I believe. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. Is it a hex coral? No, this is the octocoral, I think. It has the little rays on the arms of its polyp. And then it ha does have the black skeleton. Right? That's, huh. Unless I'm very mistaken. I don't see a black skeleton. Oh, it's darker, but I'm looking oh, at the, the rays oh, okay, of the uh, polyps as well. I'm going to try and get a quick uh, rack focus for uh, Jake on shore. Hold on just a sec. Huh? Who's Jake? Our oh, right. editor. Pilot. <laughs> and starting now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and it looks like that might just be some detritus that kind of got stuck there. Yeah. Oh, you guys see that? Right. Oh, never mind. Or am I? Do you, do you guys see that little, almost like larger polyp there? That's kind of like in between. I think that's arms? an associate. An associate it might be yeah. a hybrid or something. What for a second, Ed? Yeah, coming out. Yeah. Uh, we should probably catch up. We're still moving. Copy. Sounds good. Yep. There. It Well, that was fun. Turn and burn. Oh, there's a little shrimp. Oh. 
There'll probably be a lot more to see once we um, come over the hump at waypoint two. Be less of this tumble. Because yeah. tumbling sediment and rocks can also prevent settling and growth. Exactly. That's why I've been seeing pretty uniform and species. Yeah. We should just spend the whole expedition on the last seamount. <laughs> Alright, looks like I got your DVL track back. Sweet. Snail trail. So aloha kakahiata to all our viewers. Thanks for joining us this morning. Aloha ahi ahi if you're in other parts of the world and it's evening. We are on Expedition Ala, Aumoana Kai Uli, in Papahanao Mokoakea Marine National Monument. Thanks for joining us. No. Wait. I thought I just can't. Can I? Can I send stuff? Okay. Is this just mean it's private? Uh, are you guys talking about the science chat or? Yeah, because I remember seeing Apshana is very active in the chat whenever she's in here. So you guys are welcome. Oh, okay. I'm taking pictures of those. Oh my. So does all, do all these rocks look like tumble to you? Tumble, like oh, stuff yeah. that's kind of yep. filtered down? Yeah. Yeah. Because you have a mixture of like pillow and then some of these are just, I just don't want to collect these grains if they're not natural size because then it's just taking up space. Yeah, and I don't think they are. I don't either. I don't either. So how do nodules form? They're, they become manganese encrusted, or right? Over yes, yes. Like millions of years? Yes. It's just, so well, I'm not exactly sure. What makes them round? Is it um, like weathering, or? I can explain that at that point. Yeah, you can go ahead. So for nodules, um, what happens in the water is that under certain conditions, certain depths, certain temperatures, certain oxygen levels, um, little particulate atoms of these metals are in the water at any given time, but under these conditions, they can begin to kind of attach together over a shared object. For nodules in particular, usually it's a small, hard object, so in most cases, that would be a fish scale, a shark tooth, um, mm. anything like that, and they'll slowly encrust it all the way around. There's some more special stuff in the sediment as well that helps facilitate that. Okay. I'm not as familiar with that part, but it does go from all angles and makes it round. So if you cut them open in layers, it's like a tree. They'll have rings. Oh. Wait. Um, is, are, wait. Is nodule, you're saying it's covering, like it's, in, the manganese crust is it covering something that's or, organic that was once? Um, not, it doesn't have to be organic. It just has to be small and somewhat hard. Um, so it could be anything, pieces of shell. So it's a chemical reaction with what's in the water column? In the water and what's in the sediment under certain conditions. It's more, it's really common in the area that we're in. We're in a big zone in the Pacific called the PCZ, called the Pacific Crust Zone, <laughs> where it's very common for nodules to form and magnesium crusts to form as well. 
Um, it's a very complex process. I've tried to understand it in the past, but unfortunately, I'm not much of a chemist. Yeah, I um, don't. Oh, go ahead. Oh yeah, I um, I didn't hear. I didn't know that the manganese crust can form over those types so of there's, surfaces. There's there's really two things we're talking about. There's a manganese crust on a rock, and then there's a manganese nodule, and it's a similar process, but they're different things. It's they are no. Um, in composition, yeah. manganese crust and manganese nodules this, uh, are cucumber? exactly the same. Right, but they're different yeah. things. Yes. Like, so you Hulterian. can have a rock, like these rocks have the dark coating on them, that's a manganese crust. A manganese nodule is this process has happened over and over, uh, over an object, and so it's, like picking up one of these is probably not a nodule, because they're oh, not. Um, quick, quick zoom sorry. on this. Yeah, let's get a zoom in on this. Good. I just saw it now. Hello, Holothurian. Hello, Holothurian. That is definitely a sea cucumber. This guy is translucent, and you can see his intestines. Is he up in the water column? No, he's on the floor, but he looks like he's butt foster, partially drifting towards the back. Yeah. It looks like he's moving. They are, but slowly. Honestly, based on the morphology of this one, this one might be one that's able to swim. Uh, um, yeah, look at the back. Or you can see he has a little bit of, like, a little fold along the side of them yeah. that's very clear. Most likely that's helped it kind of undulate through the water. All right, looks like we got quite the slope, so I kind of want to take off and get back yeah. ahead. Yep. And when they do take off, they usually dump ballast as soon as they lift off. <laughs> <laughs> Buoyancy so, compensating yeah. propulsion. Yeah. Yeah. So resuming our talk about nodules, um, so the same process for the crust to the nodule is that the nodule has the water exposure for, for magnesium like testing and the sediment, okay. while the yes, exposed yep. crust Ready. only get it from the water. They're not actually getting it from the sediment below them. So they grow, the crust grow technically a little bit slower than the nodules, but the nodules have several different processes going on depending on where they are. Okay. Yeah, I didn't realize the composition of what was inside a nodule can range. Like, if you Google it, there are photos of people who have cut in nodules in half, and you can actually see the rings. It's a really cool thing to look at, even for your viewers at, viewers at home. Another cucumber. So the cool thing is, here we are in Papahanao Mokuakea, which rarely, um, most people in the world will never get a chance to come out to this sacred place. Um, in Hawaiian cosmology, it is the beginnings, the genesis of life for Hawaiians and a place where our spirits return to after death. So when we talk about um, the organisms and um, the things we see in the deep, these things belong to the realm of Kanaloa, one of the four major gods in the Hawaiian pantheon. So we honor Kanaloa as we move through and explore and honor the uh, organisms that we are genealogically connected to. Also, I did kind of ask Dr. Val a few days ago, what exactly does USGS want to study with these nodules if we get them? They're interested in the compositions and growth patterns. Now, I'm not sure. It makes sense. Yeah, we're not sure how they plan on testing it, but that's what they were looking for. That's why they want them. Yeah, uh, they can probably do that in a, in a scanning electron microscope where they do like point compositions um, and look at the morphologies in there. But there's a lot of different ways like laser ablation, ICPMS, and other things where you can like put a point on something and get a composition, then you move across the cross section and then you get like a whole range of how the composition changes. Oh. I did read a paper about year and a half ago that described the different compositions of nodules in different um, oceans. And um, the Pacific Ocean has a really high concentration of cobalt in their nodules compared to the other oceans, which can be make them even more um, 
valuable to uh, potential mining because uh, cobalt plays a very large role in the construction of our batteries. Sea cucumber. Well, thank goodness we're a protected area, the largest marine protected area in the United States. It is very important to conserve all these super unique ecosystems here in the Pacific. We have uh, so many different seamounts and so many different morphologies of seamounts, just all scattered through the Pacific. And it's just over a large area that has different biogeographical provinces. So we're going to see so many different life storms, no matter where you go in the Pacific. Even individual seamount to individual seamount is different, such as between this one on Loudon and last time on King George. It's already very different morphol animal communities here. So it's so cool. So we're not only just researching and exploring um, in this uh, incredible uh, biological seafloor area, but um, when we think about the health of the ocean and needing to protect, you know, these areas from, you know, impacts such as mining or other impacts that can um, harm our uh, organisms in the deep sea. Um, you know, having these, these places protected and managed properly is uh, really important. Also, it might be a good time for us to do an um, uh, introduction since we, I think we forgot to do that. Great idea. Anyone want to start? Okay, I'll start. So, um, aloha kakahiaka, everyone. Glad you could join us. My name is Malia Evans. Um, I am born and raised in Hilo, Hawaii. I am an archaeologist and an ethnographer. Um, more terrestrial archaeology than uh, maritime and a proud graduate of the University of Hawaii at Manoa. I currently serve as the resource monitor on board and work in Oahu as the education and outreach coordinator on behalf of Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. And I'm going to throw it over to Hannah. Are you ready, Hannah? Yes, I am ready. So hi, I'm Hannah Parody. I am a master's student at California State University, Long Beach, and I am a geology major, and my research is focused on geochronology, so geochronology is the deter determining the ages of different rocks and when these came from, and in particular, I'm looking at seamounts, and also, my seamounts are not far from where this seamount is. I'm sorry to cut you off, Hannah. Like yeah, that, yeah, I see that. Can zoom on that, please? Yep. Good for zoom. Okay, now we'll get some more. Oh. That is a tina for it. So, oh, look see at how the cilia? Yeah. What's inside, though? Cilia. That Let's eggplant. <laughs> That's very unusual shape. Um, what are you? Snap zoom oh. in here real quick. That might quick. actually be a solid part of it. Let's see. Uh, oh, it's way close. <laughs> Wow. That's cool. Yeah, it's a yeah. tiny, tiny little well. creature. Oh, wait a minute. This might actually be a special type of predatory pyrazine uh, before. So uh, that black part, I believe, it opens oh. on that end. Yeah. yeah. So these guys can actually open up and swallow prey. <laughs> so that's its little stomach? and. Yeah, the black part, oh, so you can see it's around. That's where it's going to open up on that side. I believe this is, a, yep, there we go. It's oh, opening wow. up. Oh, no, it isn't. No, that's that's cool. cool. So I've cool. I've definitely never seen one of those before. They look like little... Yeah. Little Almost looks like a scallop closed from this angle. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you just kind of see the little bit of the lips right there. Wow. It's really cool. Not a, oh, you even see a little bit of the color coming off. And the sides. 
So they have special little cilia that allow them to reflect light in those green yeah. little bands. Can you explain what cilia are for our viewers? Um, they're functionally little, um, little tentacles, little feelers that allow them to kind of propulse through the water. That's why you can see, like, it looks round from generalists, but they actually have these little, those little rows you see are actually propelling the animal. And it has these okay. little reflective, just naturally little reflective. So the animals don't actually bioluminesce. So that's our lights reflecting light off of their cilia. So it's a very beautiful animal. Sebastian, do they ever right. uh, stop Come or are they drifters? Um, nice flying, Jake. They can. Uh, you guys did a great job keeping that in, in frame. Oh, yeah. Fantastic job, ROB team. Yeah, well done. Um, so these That's guys fun. are kind of like a <laughs> little bit of a gray area in terms of zooplankton, because plankton, the term plankton applies to animals that cannot really move against the current in their own agency. Um, so shallow water team four is a plankton. But these guys, depending on the area they're in, in the deep sea, may not face that much current to fight. But at least they have a little bit more agency in where vertically where they are in the water column with their cilia. Mm. Thanks for that. It's a beautiful organism. Yeah, so I guess leaving off of where I, where I was talking. So yeah, my seamounts are in the Pacific Ocean. They're below the Hawaiian hotspot chain, seamount chain. And right now I'm currently waiting on my results back from my age determinations, but yeah, I can talk a little bit more about that later, but go ahead, Sebastian. Hi everyone, um, I am Sebastian Martinez. I am an undergraduate researcher at University of Hawaii at Manila. Um, I am part of their deep sea fish ecology lab. Um, my research is focused on um, geos, which are flat top sea mounts like this one, in the Pacific, primarily around Wake Atoll in their Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument. Um, I'm looking to work with special mapping programs to have that map these systems and kind of get a general idea of how they are separated by their community composition, their geology, and just generally any form of environmental factors to help separate environments and make them novel. Uh, I hope to take this type of system and apply them to unprotected seamounts in the Western Pacific in hopes of showing of their similarities and hopes of hopefully establishing more protected areas. Um, I guess I'll pass it off to Jacob. Oh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, my name is Jake Bonney. I'm an ROV pilot. Um, and at, at home in Rhode Island, I go to school. I'm a graduate student uh, studying ocean engineering. And uh, I do a lot of work with autonomous vehicles and uh, different sorts of ocean sensing um, platforms. Shall we pass it on to Derek? Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Derek Sowers. Uh, I am actually staff for Ocean Exploration Trust. I work as a mapping operations manager for our organization. So basically helping to uh, guide our where we, where we go to map and taking care of all our mapping capabilities and assets um, and helping to staff all these great missions that we get to do to these amazing places. Um, I'm actually physically based out of Durham, New Hampshire, at the University of New Hampshire's. Um, they have, there's a center for coastal and ocean mapping there. That's uh, just a world-class place to uh, learn about ocean mapping, get trained, and uh, a lot of the faculty there lead some really exciting work as part of the uh, Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute. Um, they do, they've done mapping missions all around the world, so a great place to, to work and, and stay tuned in with all the cutting edge um, technology about how we map the, uh, the sea floor and the water column. And uh, we'll introduce the, our co-pilot. Hi, uh, Tito Kalasius here. Uh, typically work with the Woods Hole Oceanographic as chief pilot and expedition leader with the ROV Jason. 
I'm out here moonlighting as both a Herc pilot and an Atalanta pilot. I'd like to throw a shout out to my sister Karen watching from <laughs> St. Cloud, Florida. Hey, sis. Love you. <laughs> right on. I'm Matt McNichol. I'm the video operations manager for OET, and I am sailing on this leg as a second engineer in support of our lead video engineer and anything I can do to help with her department. And then we have our fearless uh, watch leader, Mike. Oh, yeah. Um, Mike Brennan, uh, maritime archaeologist with SEARCH, um, and I am one of the lead scientists for this expedition. And so there you have it, our team. We're missing Tori. We'll have her um, introduce herself when she gets back from her ship-to-shore interaction. For those of you who are interested, you can go on to nautiluslive.org and uh, sign up to have a 30-minute ship-to-shore ex um, interaction with our team on board. So if you're at Kumu, a teacher, um, if you have a community event coming up, feel free to head over to nautiluslive.org and get your group signed up. Yeah, so now you can see the ground is changing. At yeah. first we had a lot of pillow basalts and set mixed with set sediment. And those were probably falling off from because it was downhill down slope so it probably was falling off from the more up slope and now we're looking at almost low bait to sheet lava and sheet lava indicates oh, sorry. high um, velocity. Can we take a look at that sponge on the left right there? The white one? Yes. Continue. Oh so <laughs> <laughs> sheet lava, which indicates a high velocity speed that this lava was traveling in. So I, I did anticipate seeing sheet lava upslope of like an incline. Yeah. Let's see. And the zoom when you are ready. What is this? Ooh, that's like green thing too. I know, that's what I was thinking. Is that rock? I don't know. We've s I've seen a s several of those. I don't know what, the, what they are. Okay, let's get a zoom. Whenever you're ready to Just zoom. Look how steep that is. So it's yeah, possibly that's similar steep. to one of our yeah. targets. All right, ready for zoom. Going in. Just go all the way in and start off. Mm -hmm. oh, well, further away than I thought. It's definitely a glass sponge. Coming out. Oh. I'm okay. coming out. Okay, so here is my little bit of my dilemma right now. It looks very similar to one of our targets. However, our target is a glass sponge that almost has a purple color to it. So I'm unsure if we are collecting this guy. Um. Just give me a second to... We're just pulling up some guides right here. Okay. The holes in it make it look like a lousy 1980s chroma key. <laughs> um, if you want to thought back to that one rock we were discussing about while I look around, we can do uh, that. Lower right. Do you want me to hold station for now while we figure it out, or...? Um, yes, please. Okay. Bridge nav. Oh, wait, it's over. We could have an all stop here, please. Thank you. Yeah, this one. What? Uh, that looks some, like encrusted. Definitely a different alteration after the manganese. But I'm not sure what that is. Could you? Is there a way you could take a picture of that? Oh, yes, I'll take a picture. Because yeah. I'll ask about it later, because I've, I've never seen. I mean, the geology dive has room for your samples, so if you want to sample it, it's up to you. Is it? No. <laughs> it might be too altered for, for me to get good mineral. Selection. I'm not even sure what um, is on the surface. 
I, I There's definitely a little, like, baby coral or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh I don't know what the green or the oh, these brown is. We've brown. seen oh, several of these. Those are called Boitriotal. Oh. So, it was really hard for me to pronounce that, so I might have pronounced it wrong. But <laughs> Boitriotal, it look, has that type of texture. Okay. So, so I cannot... Good to move on, guys? I think we're good to move yeah. on. We got, can we get, actually get a quick picture of the sponge real quick? I forgot to take snap. On the zoom. Ready? Yes, please. Here. With lasers. All right. Bridge nav. All right. We're good to go. Thank you, guys. Uh, if we could track a lion at bearing 190 at 0 0.3 knots, please. Thank you. Um, Hannah, can you repeat the how you have described that rock to me, please? I would probably say, on after the manganese coating, there is a. It was kind of like a almost a rusty mud color, yeah. and it looked like it had um. Like it wasn't all flat. It like ate it looks like almost like. No, I, w I don't want to say spiky. It's not spiky. It's a um, rugged. Is that a good descriptive word? Rugged. Is that a word? I don't know. Um, to me, it almost looks polypy, but it wasn't. Yeah, polyps. I know. Polyp-like features. Maybe just say bulbous. 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 There bulbous. we go. Hi everyone, this is Tori. I'm back from a ship to shore interaction and I'm like looking through the messages. What did y'all been seeing? Did y'all see a tina <gasps> Look! Yeah, it is was that uh, a rat tail? Mm, no. That is a yes, that is a rat tail. Rat tail? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, we saw a predatory tina that was uh, had a purple interior, which is pretty cool. What? Oh, I'm excited to see the highlights later. Actually, since um, you weren't here, it probably didn't get logged as a highlight. I, I noted, so I emailed Megan about it and, oh. get, and sent her the time. Okay. Because uh, I didn't think about that until after. Oh, okay. Nor do I know how to do it. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just a heads up, I'll be, uh, I have another one at like 7.30. Jeez. So before then, <laughs> I can show you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> schedule. Okay. Yes. For those of you that are listening, um, <laughs> these ship to shore interactions are so much fun and it's part of my role as a science communication fellow. Um, we can schedule these like 30 minute one on one conversations with classrooms around the world. So, so far this morning, I've been talking to some classes in Virginia and I think I've got an elementary school in California coming up later. So if you're interested, definitely get signed up. There is a link on the Nautilus Live webpage under education. It's a great time, always. Tori, I actually have a question about highlights. Yeah. So that day that we saw the Tina 4 on the King George seamount, mm -hmm. do we have a video of that? I think so. I sit here and like literally anything we see that I'm like, oh, this is cool. Uh -huh. I sit here and just click these from highlights. My, from my if understanding, we're currently having some scientists ashore evaluate it before we oh. talk about it further. Okay, okay, sorry. That makes sense. What's that? The, the Tina 4 that we saw on the King George where it was The like big guys. Massive. Yeah. We have, currently have some scientists which are evaluating what we saw. So okay. we'll get some more concrete some information kind of soon. Calm, yeah. Okay. And then, because mm. when I get that video, I'm probably just gonna send it <laughs> to, to a lot of my friends. Yeah. Wait, is that the one that I missed because I got up to go to dinner? I don't even know if I was going yes. that. that. Yeah, that one. The one that okay. you still haven't seen. Well, I thought we saw a second one later. We did. We did. We did. Well. Yeah. But it wasn't the original. It wasn't the OG Tina Floor. Uh, what was the one uh, that we saw? It starts with an S. Siphonophore? Yes, Siphonophore. Yeah. I like that one, too. The one that was holding the fish head. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was cool. That was so bizarre. I was just like, how did that get there? They can become very beautiful colors. That one was kind of like a little bit muted for me, but I've seen like some very, very pretty siphonophores. So hopefully we'll see some more soon. Nice. Excellent. 
I know I've been sharing a lot about what I've really enjoyed so far. This is only my second dive, um, and I'm having so much fun. Um, does anyone else have something that they really enjoyed last time from our previous watches? I really like the Kapuna Coral. <laughs> <laughs> so for those who are watching, we saw a very large black coral. And these black corals, when they get bigger, they take extremely long periods of time to grow, usually about millimeters per year. And this particular colony was gigantic like compared to the surrounding. And it had a bunch of squat lobsters living in it. It was hosting its own tiny micro community. Um, and we're calling it the Kapuna coral because that is what we call our elders in Hawaiian. Correct, Amelia? Oh, you're not on... I think you're muted. There we go. Yeah. Correct, Sebastian. Kupuna in Hawaiian means elders or ancestors. And um, corals are our first ancestor. If we look at the Hawaiian creation chant, the Kumulipo, the first organism that was born was a coral polyp. And so pretty incredible that we can see all of these ancient um, Kupuna corals as we're exploring the deep. A little snap on that, too? Yeah. Let's yep. get a little zoom on that. Same. Thank you Again, for it's that, same looking that alteration. Wow. Yeah. And there's a little shrimp in there. Encrusting uh, sponge or something. Oh, look, they're all, all the little shrimp are in the crevices. Sebastian, have we seen any of those shrimp uh, that we've been looking for? Um, so we have not seen so far. They seem to be only exclusively found as a um, commensal on glass sponges and soft sponges. Not a soft sponge, soft coral. Um, so we probably won't see many of them until we reach a little bit more coral dense ecosystem habitat. So as we make our way up the seamount, we should be seeing a lot more opportunities to look for that guy. Okay. I think my favorite thing from the last dive was uh, the little sharks that we saw, which yeah. turns out Sebastian is correct. They are the uh, Hawaiian lantern sharks. Oh. And so we saw them um, above 800 meters, so we may not get any of this dive because we're only going to about 800 meters. Yeah. But definitely going to keep my eye out. For more? Yep. I like them too. Also, uh, Tim, hi Tim, I see that you're on here, uh, also told us that we can lock highlights back in time if we needed to. We just enter in the timestamp. So oh, we cool. know like what time. Well, that's good. good. I sent an email to Megan so she can always tell me to do that. Mm -hmm. Or, or maybe... Tim, you can't can go back in time. It it's not possible. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I'm always not here, you can just, this little tab open. Yeah. And click highlight. And then... Well, but how do you go back in time, I mean? Oh. That's a great question. Oh, no, no. It said custom time. I click here. Yeah. So if you, it was 15, like 1521. I'm always surprised by all the little details that Hannah is able to call out of the video, but then I remember at the end of the watch, we have to clean her nose prints off the monitor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's passion. <laughs> Let's give that a shot. Um, just type in a predatory Tina for N O P H yeah. I really wish we could have gotten a video that opened its mouth. I'm going to read that. That yeah. would have been really yeah. sick. Yeah, that would have been sick. Because they're really Thank cool you, Tim. in the mouth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Will it show it to you? Thanks, Tim. It's like the path down of the sea. No. Um, sometimes it'll pop up right here. Let me refresh. Oh, okay. But yes, thank you, Tim. This has been helpful in our highlight game. Let me see. That's all right. <laughs> Either way, I send it to Megan so she can always look into it later. The um, the data systems here have changed a lot since I was uh, working yep. here a lot more, like seven years ago. They've done a great job at uh, making things more user friendly and, and auto auto um, populating a lot of the, the the data stuff. So it's a lot easier to use through, through the data portal. So that's really great to see. I used to have to like go in and like plug a flash drive and download stuff and yeah. all that. So now I can just go boop boop. Oh, access. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. It's not super difficult to pull stuff that we've seen on our dives yeah. for the interactions. 
um, which is nice. That's so cool. I can have that. Also, um, Hannah, you've got someone viewing that's saying you should reach out to the Dominican High School Science Department and the LSU Geology Department. We've made connections with Dominican. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Wait, I wonder who's talking about LSU <laughs> Geology. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, so I did my undergrad at LSU, and it was really, really fun. I mean, we got to go on field camps to Colorado to... I did American Southwest geology too. We we went on a lot of field trips, which was Guys, like can we get a zoom on the branching really cool. part there? Yeah, sure. I love hearing about all those trips that y'all took. You learned so much, and those experiences are so important and like kind of yeah. make you just so excited. Yeah, because you know in Louisiana we oh, don't man, have any please. mountains, yeah. so <laughs> we made sure to go to places that had mountains and different uh, types of topography. And not just uh, river the other beds side of it. Mississippi River and the coast. Even though those are all important, but yeah. especially for a geologist, you need you need to look at some mountains. Yeah. Can anyone get a clear count on the arms on these polyps? Oh, oh, <laughs> uh, six or seven. Uh, I think it's eight. Okay, it's off the coral. Um, anyone in chat in the science chat? Uh, a sample or yeah, are we I, good to move on? I agree on eight. So Hannah, apparently it was your mom who said that. <laughs> <laughs> hey mom. Hey mom. <laughs> Happy birthday. Uh, birthday. All right, we're getting a request to sample please. Oh, okay. Um, Come Mary, out. can we get an ID as well to go with that? Or like a tentative one at least? <clears throat> Do you want to stop, or do you think we're be able to pull it off? Uh, we're behind already. Yeah, may want to stop. Okay. Bridge nav. Do an all stop, please. Thank you. Okay. It's a tall one. I may have to. Yeah. Do it in the column. Yeah, we want to cut off somewhere above the um, fork. On which side? Um, either should be fine. Whatever is most easiest for you guys. Mom, I'm letting you know I did reach out to. Dominican. I did Miss Koenig. So just letting you know, I did reach out. So we're trying to set up a ship to shore. Mm -hmm. And also one of our navigators is from St. Yeah. Mary's Dominican High School. So yeah. we're both going to hop on the call for the ship to shore. And I think we're going to talk to the biotech club, which Tito, I you was may have a to part help me out here. So really you may have to help me out here. Oh, no, cause it's a little high, so if I, well, maybe I can sit back. Sit I can sit down right here, maybe. All right, get your uh, starboard toe in. information about yeah. the octa coral. Mm -hmm. It's actually a bamboo it. coral with a special morphology that she's been, that uh, one of our scientists sure is referring to as a sparse brancher. Uh -huh. So I imagine that means that it only has very few branches, which is why we only see two here. Okay, sit down right and, uh, here. Did you say there's somebody on board who went to your same high school? Yes, Catalina. I had that happen once, too. <laughs> Yeah, but they were 30 crazy. years after me, but still, <laughs> very strange. Yeah. Catalina was seven years. She graduated in 2011. I graduated in 2018. So uh, I did hear about her, though, because <laughs> she played soccer, <laughs> and so did her. I. And she was on the team that won state. Uh, so when I showed up, I think in 2013, 2014, my coach was talking about how one of them went to play at LSU, which she did, which was incredible. Huh. But that also means that I saw, because uh, I also went to LSU soccer camp. How are we doing over there? During that time well, that so she was playing for so the soccer much. team. So I was like, we might have seen right each now. other wow. and just not 13? Know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just don't dally. All right. I love that. Hey, I'll see you in 10 Crack years on. on the ship. Should be all set. <laughs> oh, okay. 
But yeah, we actually have a lot of people from Louisiana on this bit. Yeah, it's kind of odd. Yeah. <laughs> and Represent. Hilo. And we got Hilo. three from Hilo. So Hilo's representing on board the Nautilus. That's actually, like I was saying yesterday, the only Hawaiian city that I really, we stayed in for a week to look at the uh. National Park, look at the lava tubes, which are fantastic. I can't <laughs> recommend enough to go see these lava tubes. Uh, size? Um, that should be appropriate. Are we yeah. going to uh, slurp or yes, box? Yes, please. We're slurp. going to head into slurp three. Slurp three, uh, Sample obtained. Mm -hmm. We also, uh, yeah. we went yeah. whale watching in Kona. Oh, that's cool. So nice. it was during the breeding, I'm pretty sure, because it was in, in February. Winter. Yeah, yeah. The, the humpback whales normally yes. return to Hawaii in November to get to up until yeah. April. Maybe we can do it quick. Yeah. yeah, so we got to see, there was a, a mother whale with an escort. And that was really cool. So there was two like, you know, right we're gonna, next probably to each other with a baby. And Oh, hold the so sample. Special. They're amazing, amazing creatures. Yeah. All right. All right. It was the first time I ever went whale watching, and I, I was very like, ah, mm -hmm. I was freaking out. They and were so beautiful. They are. They're so magnificent. They take your breath away. Ooh. And just think of the migration. You know, the thousands of miles they migrate every year to return to Hawaii. So in Hawaiian, the humpback whale is kohola. 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 Just hanging on there. I was whale watching on Nautilus yesterday, but mm -hmm. I didn't see any whales. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have a population um, up in Papahanao Mokuakea. We've been kind of monitoring whale song since about maybe for the last couple of years. Um, so we do know that there is a group that are coming up further northwest of the main Hawaiian islands. So more research being done to see if this might be a distinct population or part go to the of bottle. the population uh, um, that comes into the main islands. You swap these here. You go to the bucket. Is it during the breeding months that they're here? Or? Yes. Okay. So they come. They normally return to Hawaii so between November off, and um, April. Okay. Look how steep that is. Oh my gosh. Sometimes in the view of the cameras, you forget that you're on the side of the mountain. Oh my gosh, that's and so crazy. And you also forget the scale of this mountain. That yeah. it's like if you're trying to scale your own mountain uh, nearby on the land, you forget how big it can be. Oh my gosh. And you have to remember that Herc's arm is roughly the size of around a five, six person. And you come up on a bunch of the, uh, Wow. Are we yeah. trying to like move to a better spot before we take out the slurp? Yeah, Atalanta kept swinging, so mm. I was starting to get pulled and just wanted to catch up before actually, like completing the sample. So Herc is at the end of its tether there and sure. getting dragged yeah. by Atalanta, so we have okay. to He's catch up. Definitely, after the sample, our, uh, sample, definitely feel free to speed up and catch wow. up. It, it seems that more followed the yeah, I'm gonna sit down right here. largely similar around here. So we won't, hopefully won't be missing much. So why did we want this sample? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, I don't think one I'm of our scientists of shore requested the sample because awesome. she's studying specifically the morphology of this particular type of core, which is called sparse branching. Ah. Uh, that's, oh, because it, it, okay, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. it's, because it, branches. I was in the it like branches sparsely. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about Catalina and I's story, I think, when you were explaining that. <laughs> so going That's yeah. why we decided to sample three. it. Sample yep. jar three? This is the yeah. great story. Well, <laughs> yeah. sorry. I think that's the one. Identifying coral species is by their morphology. Confirm that, Sebastian. Sample jar three? Um, sample jar three, sample 25. And slurp is on. Roger that. It looks like it's, it wants to go in there. It really does. Yeah. 
the slurp is my favorite. I love watching it. Oh. I love watching it when it gets to the jar. Yeah. Yep. Sample there collected. It is. Sample 25 confirmed. That's great. The new sample sample jar setup, it, or the suction, so much faster than the old one. The old one, yeah. we'd be waiting for like oh, yeah, thir yeah. 30 seconds. Be well, so and it's nice, you can see like... So much suspense. Especially the, the section of the red one that we did at the end of last dive. Like, you can see that they come in intact, so it's like the suction doesn't like destroy them. Yeah. As you, ex like, you'd think that something getting sucked up a long toes like that would hurt it, but it, like they come in one piece, so it's really nice that we can see that in real time. So unless Hannah, wants to, <clears throat> unless Hannah wants to grab a rock, we should be good to speed up and catch up to the boat if uh, you haven't already. Yeah, we're yep. we're yeah, caught we're, up right now. Oh, we're caught. Yeah, up? we're okay. gonna do we're gonna do rocks after this next waypoint. Yes, so sounds good. Let's go to the waypoint. Yippee! Assuming there's a little bit of a change in the uh, bottom composition too, as we're yep. looking for a place to set yes. down. So for movement speed, are we happy with 0 0.3? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Zooming. Bridge nav. Could we track a line at bearing 182 at 0 0.3 knots? Thank you. So on the last leg, I know there was one watch that was doing a shrimp count, and I'm just realizing, <laughs> like, how much work that must have been. Cause there was just, like, so much shrimp. That's a, yeah, that's a, that's a tall order. There's so many. I don't know if you were with us, Tori, but one of when we were looking at, I think it was a, we, a glass sponge, uh -huh. and it was a weird alteration. In some of the crevices of the rocks in that area, there were just shrimp hanging out. Really? Yeah. Together? Well, they were they were like neighbors. Oh. They were across from each other, <laughs> in different crevices. But yeah, it was pretty cute. I wonder if they make sounds like they do in the shallows. Yeah, the clicking you know, sound that, you that hear when you're diving. Sound? Yeah. yeah, it's amazing how sound travels in water. What is it? Uh, wait, sound 10 times faster? 1,500 meters yeah. per second, five times faster. Yeah, it's um, uh, it's pretty amazing. And I mean, let's so that's also uh, temperature and salinity. Yeah, dependent. dependent. Yep. Yeah, yeah fresh water is about 1,422. Um, I, my room's up towards the bow, and uh, I can hear the uh, the sub bottom chirping when we're when we're transiting. And it's it's not like I. I it doesn't keep me awake or anything, but it's like a loop, loop. Uh, and it's weird. Sometimes when it's um, when we're in shallower water, it sounds more like a hand clap, like a. So it, it, it the the system actually uses a different. Fre wow. You can hear the frequency change uh, depending on our depth, which is because it needs to travel further when we're in deeper water. So oh. it's a high, it's a higher frequency. Um, but it's it's just amazing that a little click like that can you know, move through the water so fast and then be picked up by the transducer and show us what the seabed looks like. It's just, uh, it's kind of mind blowing that, we, that you know, how people were able to, to develop that and, and get the, the mapping systems that we have now, just based on sound. And that, that's just because of the property of water that attenuates sound. Um, are you guys trying to get a zoom on that or are we just kind of chilling? I was just chilling for a moment. Got it. <laughs> Do you want to zoom on that? Um, I think it's just a crisis card. <laughs> oh, it's just that. Just a crisis card. <laughs> We've seen a lot of those. It is There's my favorite coral. <laughs> oh. Pretty coral. Oh, metallic orgy. My new favorite coral as of yesterday was the the, the red black coral that we saw. That was just um, amazing. The, I believe we. The big one. The Opathies, I believe, was the one that we ended up getting something on the ID for. And Tori and I showed that as a clip on the interaction we did. Uh, yeah. Yet. When was that? Yesterday morning? Oh, so I guess we saw it two days yeah. ago. I don't know. It's all one big day. It is. Mm -hmm. Just kind of waiting on uh, Atalanta to start moving with the ship. So. Come on, Atalanta. Okay. Just, uh, that's why I'm just shrimp. chilling. Might as well reset you to... Yeah. Oh, there's a little suggestion. 
Throw me, throw me a reset. <laughs> well, little Sebastian. Suggested. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Sebastian is a crab. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sebastian's also an ROV. Is it? Sebastian yeah. with an hmm? SUV. On the Falcor. Oh, I didn't know that. I haven't been on it's that boat. Sub That's like one of the, one of the boats I haven't been on. Yeah. Wait a minute. Oh, Sebastian. Can we actually get a zoom in on that? <laughs> yes, that we can. Can you get a little bit closer? <laughs> Ed, you change go, go for zoom. Can't resist. You have to, uh, you know, appeasing the ROV pilot, with his That's favorite coral. That's a pretty little, pretty pattern there. Wow. Y'all said this was a Chrysogorgia? Yes, I believe so. Otherwise known as a Zeusicle. Oh, my favorite shot, right down the, right down the spiral. I like this. I like Zeusicle. Uh. Appropriate. That's that's uh, how you blow up a Death Star. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. little. Little yep. um, spiral Just like in the shooting. Oh, sorry. Come yeah, on. Yeah, it's on our collection list, so just hover as freely as you want or to move on whenever you want. Oh, wait, let's blow that. Oh. Go blow. What was it? Huh? It'll create a base. Right there. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah, oh, wait. Yeah, that's what I'm pointing at. Um, <laughs> put your on that, please. Oh, my God. That was Hannah's circling, not mine. Just, <laughs> yeah, just sorry. clarifying. Just Why don't I have a circle thing? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not giving you access to this. What You're are like, what's you? This? What's this? What's this? What's this? You, that a is a sea cucumber, and that's definitely a swimmer. It's he has so cool as you can see all the insides. He has a fan oh. on the very back that he uses that's going to be mm -hmm. facing mm -hmm. up in the water column. That little fan with the spikes. Then they bend in hand. So this like guy a is a variety in the water that we would call a flying, a flying headless chicken monster, coined oh, by oh, Craig yeah. Smith. Um, so it's a very cool thing that's swimming, and you can just see its intestines very so clearly. It's a beautiful. Oh, we might see it take off. Oh, wow. is it getting scared of us and trying to leave? Wait, say the name again. You said flying headless. Um, headless flying chicken monster. Headless <laughs> flying chicken monster. Why? Coming in. Why would you name it that? <laughs> well, you, you, you get that when it's swimming, it looks very different. There's actually like a little bit of a round ring right under that little crown it has. And it gives it, it look like its head got chopped off uh -huh. or something. But uh -huh. it's actually just its mouth. What's that little critter just above it? Oh, let's get, can we get a zoom on that, possibly? I mean, there's, there's always Full in zoom. Ooh, let's see. Full zoom. This little area is fine Shrimp. over here. It looks like it might be a small squat lobster, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. It's got a very long antenna coming off it. Is it? Oh, yeah, I can see that. Huh. I can't really make a super positive ID at this distance. It just looks like he's kind of just watching what cucumber's doing. All right, so whenever you guys are ready to move on, or if anyone has any more comments. And we're moving on. Good, cat, good thing we moved in on that Christ of the Lord, or else we yeah. missed that. Oh, no, no, good. Oh, it just moved the right. sea cucumber. Oh, did it? Yep. I, uh, that was nice. So, are, uh, I heard you say sea pigs? Yes. Are sea pigs? Any sea pigs go. are awesome. I, I encountered them for the first time uh, off of California, and I was right like, there. "What is this? It is the coolest thing." And also, I forgot they're like purple, and they, you can see their insides too. I forgot they're called. Ooh! I think that the the OG sea pigs <laughs> live in super deep environments, way deeper than here, Mondo, the Abyssal Plains. Uh. Wow. That's funny, sea pigs. It yeah, reminds me of people who take their pigs out surfing. In Hawaii, there's several people that have like pet pigs. They'll take mm. them out on their surfboard. It's the cutest oh, really? thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sea pig. There's also uh, autonomous scientific instruments that are referred to as pigs because they're titanium cylinders with four legs. Oh. 
I've actually deployed, uh, been on another vessel and deployed pig carcasses to the seafloor. I think I've also seen hog samplers. So Hannah, can you tell us a little bit about the overall geological goals for the seamount? So yeah, so for this seamount, we have sam we also have samples from already, but it was on the other side. So we still want samples from this side, but again, not as important as something we haven't gone to before. I know for my seamounts, I have, for one of mine, it's almost like a guillot and then next on the right and left side of the guillot are peaks so it has like two saddles and i was able to get samples from the back of the guillot so towards the north side of the guillot and also on both of the peaks so that i could get an age on when those peaks occurred in relation to when the guillot was also were created so it's still important to get ages from all sides because you don't know when they formed what was possibly first. So I haven't gotten my ages back from those samples that have different locate dive locations. But I'm really curious to see if they are going to be in similar, similar ages or not, if they occurred at the same time or not. Um, so do you process those samples for ages in-house at the university, or do you send them somewhere, or...? So, for me, for my age determinations in geochronology, I went to go use the Argon Argon so mass spectrometer in Las Vegas, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, actually with Dr. Conrad, who was on the Scientists Ashore chats a few days ago, and... Also for my chemical analysis, which is getting trace members, which are like rare earth elements. And then also major chemical, sorry, major elements that that's like sodium and potassium. So we send those out to Michigan to get done. So University of Michigan and University of Nevada, Las Vegas. However, I did a lot of my sample preparation at CSULB. So I sawed, I sonicated, which is basically you're putting the, <laughs> oh, yeah, that, yeah, you're putting these rock samples in a beaker filled with water, and then you put those beakers inside a little tank, a little. Oh, sorry, just one thing. Can we zoom in that little pink guy on the left? Yeah, a little bit at the end of the. Oh, if you're rope, we can keep moving on. It's fine. It's not too big of a deal. No, it's okay. We, we just have to wait a moment so I can get a little closer. No worries. Just over go. You guys rate right this comfortable. Yep. All right. But eat good meal. Yeah, so I did sonicating, so cleaning the samples from clay or any dirt that was attached to it from sawing. And so then we would take those. I would put them in a crusher and I was crushing so that we can get even smaller samples of the minerals because after we crushed, we also sonicated again. And after we sonicated those crushed, it was mineral, mineral grains from 0 0.212 microns to 0 0.425 microns. Those were our target mineral sizes that we guessed, not guessed, sorry. We looked at under our thin section, we made notes of how so, how big those phenocrysts were. So oh, you zoom in? in mm. oh, what was that? Uh, that might be a shrimp. Let's see. Mm. Is this another octocoral? Looks like an octocoral. I wonder if we can somehow lure this guy a little bit around, see if these are the species we're looking at. I could uh, 
fly around to the right or the left. Tina says it's a Chrysogorgia. Chrysogorgia? Hmm? Maybe. Look at this. The, that, those basalts have a, I could be pronouncing it wrong, but boit, botrioidal. Hmm. It's spelled, it has the word yodel in it. Okay. Maybe you can see better from here. Do <laughs> you want to zoom in? Yes. We just want to get an angle on that shrimp. If it is a shrimp. That's a shrimp, yep. Hannah, uh, what does that mean? I still cannot. So you can see the texture the right side. here. Mm -hmm. So I that compare taste. it to the, so if you've ever seen Incredibles, mm -hmm. and in that scene where the dad is like getting bombarded with those like big, like oh, yeah. metals. Like, yeah, like those blobs. Yeah, yeah those yeah. blobs. <laughs> the, that's what it looks like. Yeah. Uh, I cannot get a good look at that morphology the way it is. It looks like the marshmallow clump downstairs. That's what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, that yeah. too. <laughs> Which is weird. Are y'all eating those marshmallows? Can or we are you pan left them in at all? Like I've had a few of them. Oh, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure nobody's eating them. <laughs> Put them in your hot uh, cocoa. Pulls uh, in. I'm seeing Dang, no, appropriate coloration to yeah. what we're looking for. I just can't see the full body type of it obscured like that. The critter is hidden. We good to move on? Um, I think we're good to move on right. for now. I, we might out. find a better specimen, more easy to collect later on. Mm. Thank you guys, though. How will we collect the shrimp? Oh. Will we slurp them? Uh, mm, most likely the slurp would be the best, unless we're collecting the coral sample with it. Then we could put it into one of the boxes. Yeah, so for the minerals, the minerals we're looking for are any that have high potassium, because high potassium is the parent isotope. Well, potassium 3940 are the isotopes that we use for determining the ages, because we use the argon method, and argon 39 and 40 is a daughter isotope, so that means over time, it like changes, mm -hmm. you know, like parent to daughter. It really helps with the names that are given. <laughs> but yeah, so that's, we measure, we degas it, and we measure the amount of gas that the argon is in the mass spectrometer, which is at University of Nevada, Las Vegas. There's also a lot of, it's a chemical reaction that's going on because in the mass spectrometer, you mm -hmm. just get a high speed irradiation mm -hmm. of the of neutrons, which create a neutron capture reaction. Mm -hmm. So you're capturing the, new, the potassium 39 neutron and you're releasing the argon 39 proton, which is measured mm. in the mass spectrometer. So that, that's what's determining our ages. And the best way to do that, or at least from my samples, we used amphiboles, which have really good, they can stand, they're not as altered as compared to a plagioclase, which is really good because also amphiboles they form at such high heats that it can give us the a really good time of when these rocks were formed. But honestly, we'll take anything we can get from these rocks since they're super altered. It ranges, ranges from amphiboles, plagioclase, and even the whole rock samples. One of my, my samples was a whole rock, which again is better than nothing. So, but again, my whole rock <laughs> looked really good under the microscope. So there was a lot of grains that weren't altered. So hoping to get a good age determination from that. But I was, oh, go ahead. Did y'all cut open any rocks yesterday with the rocks so I could hear it? Yes. Did you do all of them? Yes, we did all of them. <laughs> and there were actually, I was really excited because the one that we got guys, I think in the hand sample, I think I see plagioclase oh, crystals. Sediment oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So 
We're gonna wait for it to dry out, but I was like talking with Val and I, she was like, it could be a possibility. I need to look at it when it's lo su oh, sunny board, outside. Is that normal? But if that's um, if what I'm seeing is the yeah, plaid, then sometimes it gets great sample that we picked stuck up. In the vehicle. I wasn't able to see any amphibols, but that might be because, again, it was still wet. So, and the amphibols are darker than the plagioclase. Plagioclase comes up as like a grayish white color, and the amphibols are shine not shiny but they kind of have they're more crystal they're they? y yes and they're a really dark like almost black color so didn't see any of that but some of the other samples that we got didn't really look like i could use them for age determinations for geochronology but i think that was saying we could probably get a good chemical analysis off of them one of our samples was really small, and I don't think that from the rocks that I worked on, I needed a lot of sample because, like I was saying, we crushed it. And then after we crushed it, we would put it through a magnetic separator because all these minerals have a different magnetic pull. And what we would try to do is target those minerals by separating them by their magnetic pull and force. So in a lot of these basalts, we actually have magnetite in them. So magnetite is what we use for magnets, mm -hmm. the name. So we wanted to make sure to get those magnets out of the rock sample so that it doesn't affect the age. So yeah, that's, and we need a lot. You need a lot of amphiboles and plagioclase in order to get a good age. So. Once you separate out, a, separate a lot of the ground mass and the magnetite, you're not going to have a lot of the sample left. So, so when you're talking about size, like for our sampling here in Tupahanamukokya, is there a certain size that you're looking for? Like you don't want to have too little, mm -hmm. or you don't want to have too much. So what's kind of that perfect range? So, so to be fair, there was only one that I was just like, I don't, we could only probably do chemical analysis analysis on it but other than that like all the other ones i was like i could get it i could definitely have enough sample here so our size was great i'm not sure if i i'll double check what size it was that it came out to because we wrote it down but once i'll write it down and then use that for future, future. pictures mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. pictures for future collections I heard the word grapefruit size kind of thrown around. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, I'll, I'll get. Thank you for telling me that because I, I will write that down actually. I'm just excited about your passion for yeah. geology and Thanks. you know if there's people out there, young ones, old ones, because you can always go back to school later in life. You know, age is not a determinant of your education. So. Um, for me, I just love, I'm inspired by Hannah's passion for the work that she's doing. Oh, thank you. I'm listening to all your descriptions and imagining how proud your uh, mom is sitting at <laughs> yeah. home. Yeah, she's at work. <laughs> <laughs> she's supposed to be working. She's supposed to be working. <laughs> I'll tell you too, you did a really good job explaining mass spectrometry. Or spectrometry. That's I, something I haven't thought about in a long time, and I've definitely forgotten like how example how exactly it works, but that was a great explanation. And you said you smash these to, you're looking for samples like 25 to 45 microns? Oh, to, oh, actually I'm looking for grain sizes that are 0 0.212 microns to wow. 0 0.425 microns. Can we get zoom wow. on that please? You ready? Uh, one second. Okay. Let me, let me get I heard the word here. zoom too many times, Pinto was saying it. <laughs> Let me get real up close with this. This looks like one of those World War II mines. Yeah. The ones that float up on the chain. Yeah. The Nemo ones. All right, good for Zoom. All right. Oh, Ooh, wow. Anemone. The little, like, white dots at the end oh, are I, very yeah. interesting. Is that a mouth? There is a, a oh. picture of one of these at the bottom of the ladder going from the upper deck to the main deck on the port side. So this on the guy, wall. I, I learned this peripherally, but there's something special about this, if I recall correctly, because oh, the white tip yeah. ones have a special, like, 
morphological difference. Shrimp. Um, I don't recall Shrimp. exactly the, let me document the white tips. And coming back in slow. And what is this organism called? This is would just be an anemone in our, for our purpose of description. Okay. Um, but there, I know there's a, something special about white tip that make it more difficult to describe an ID. Um, definitely got some screenshots in there. So whenever you guys are ready to zoom out. All right. Ready for it. Uh, someone in the chat, uh, Veronica, suggested a Coralomorph? Morph? That's what, that might, that sounds, rings a bell. Let me. I'm looking at pictures and I see some that, I see the little white dots. It looks like it would be one of those things that light, it looks like there are light bulbs at the end of those. <laughs> yeah. That it could light up. Even though I know it doesn't, but. <laughs> I like them though. Some of these creatures just look like so much fun. It is, well, I don't know. Well, next time you stick around the wet lab, maybe you can handle some of them and take a closer look. I know, last time I was, I, I went back to sleep when John brought, brought them in because with my rocks, I don't really have a time restraint on them because they're, they're dead compared to the <laughs> biology stuff. They are indeed dead. Yeah. All right. Not like a uh, four million year old rock needs to be cut in the next 12 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, these rocks should still be around the 100 to 80 million year old range. Whoa. Yeah. So, so as long as you do it within that time frame. Yeah, yeah. Hard to be late. Ooh. Yeah, one well, of our scientists is short confirmed that it's a Look at awesome. that. Uh, that might be a sea star. A little sea star there. Yeah. A little flyby. Quick flyby. Yeah. Can we? It's, uh, I don't it's not leathery enough to be one of our targets. Yeah, Kay. so we can keep going. Because we're almost to rock that? collecting time. <laughs> Oh yeah, so yesterday I was looking up how big the Pacific Ocean was during the time these rocks were formed, mm -hmm. and also in comparison to today. And the Pacific Ocean was 60% of the Earth's ocean during the Cretaceous, and then today it's 50%. So it's shrunk from, so around 10, well, 9.9%, because it was 50.1%. So 9.9% .9 shrink from the subduction zones hmm. and the ring of fire. So it, it is getting smaller since then. Oh, oh and also sea level was 170 meters taller like higher uh -huh. compared to today, which is how we have the epicontinental seas. So mm -hmm. you know how in North America, there's like the Grand Canyon mm -hmm. and that all used to be underwater. Mm -hmm. So it was surround, so that, so yeah, during this time it was underwater because of how high the sea level it was. And also the temperatures were higher back then than they were today. So, I was thinking, I was, well... Is that Hawthorne? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think so. So, I was, I was thinking how, looking back at the Cretaceous and how much warmer it was than today, if that can help us with, like, understanding the cycles of mm -hmm. glaciers and those those periods that there's a, a shift in the climate and how we could look at 
back, how we always say we look back on history because history can tell us what can happen in the future. Mm -hmm. So looking back at the Cretaceous is probably really, really important as any of the other eras or timelines, but it's the most recent one that was really hot. Yeah. So what that's can- that's interesting that you brought that up about um, the mountains and how they were underwater. Cause like in the Appalachian mountains, that's something when I take students kind of hiking in the summertime for that summer camp job we'll talk about. And I wanted to read to you, uh, one of the teachers I work with, we'll do ship to shore with him soon. Yeah. And he sent me an email uh, talking about the live stream and how it was just so incredible because he uh, loved the crinoids, the siphonophore, but he said it feels like he's going back like a few hundred million years because he will find fossilized crinoid stems. Oh yeah, yeah. crinoids are and so cool. Like it yeah. Yeah. Oh, it looks like a crinoid, actually. Yeah. yeah. So he gets like really excited that we're like looking at them. Yeah, now, yeah. About the bottom of the ocean. Um, and quick, that's really quick cool. snap zoom in. Yeah, snapping in. Confirmed. I'm gonna yeah, look up crinoid. a picture of a crinoid fossil now. Crinoid yeah, no. In um in the Houston Science. Natural Museum, there's a, a massive or... shale with a crinoid, oh. and it's beautiful so I would probably look up Houston Natural Museum of History Good idea. Crinoid. Mm -hmm. coming out so in Hawaii we have um, Olelo no Eau which are traditional wise sayings and we have one that says Ikawa ma mua Ikawa ma hope that we look to the past to inform the future and I think that's such a, a wonderful lesson for all of us because the past will tell us so much about our history and the evolution of the world and of, of the human species as well. Oh, yeah. When, when you brought it, I think you brought it up a few days ago, too, and I was like, that's exactly how we look at geology. It's like looking back on the geologic past record and seeing the patterns of like cool versus warm weather climate changes. So... Again, another thing that Hawaiians really have a great. Up I'm sorry. Oh. I think you might be muted, Sebastian. There you go. Let's zoom in that little green spot. Yep. It's a color we don't see too often. No. Yeah. It's a rock band, dude. I think. It's a well for my current site. Mm -hmm. but we, let's take closer zoom when we get a chance. Good for zoom. Oh, it's not. What is that? It's like a sponge encrusting yeah. sponge. It looks like slime. Is it, could it be like a dead sponge? Two other spots directly below it. Yeah, those little spots. Those dark ones? Mm-hmm. Interesting. And there's even uh, where's my tea? Uh, freezing point. And there's a little. This I little know, guy up there. Yeah. <laughs> little star. <laughs> feature to it. What a great feature. Uh, Called we'll a tie. Huh. To me, it might be a Briah's. No, it's not Briah's. There's own. three um, of those little circles. I'm leaving sponge. Maybe even an egg case. Because it looks like you can see little trails inside of it. Oh. Like uh, even like egg, little eggs from something. I don't know. I don't think I showed uh, Mike this one, but there's one, two, <laughs> three of those. <laughs> I did not know you had that effect. Can our viewers see that, or is that just? No, that's that just for our entertainment. No, we can stream it when it we're being helpful. All right. All right. Just. Just move on. We got we'll enough of that. Moving on. So. Yep. Cool to see. I took a highlight. Some stretches here. Oh, wait. Did you guys see that giant coral to the right? Mm. Well, not giant, but big. Nice bigger piece in the middle of a bit of a desert. Okay, so Georgia. Almost at waypoint two. 
Almost there. And at waypoint two, that's when we might start our rock sampling. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, well, sometime between two and three, there's like a kind of a saddle for a, it's not a slope anymore, at least. Mm -hmm. We're 142 meters from waypoint two with the vehicles. Awesome. Yippee. Hey, and I have a question for you about the seamount. Yeah. So I'm looking at the dive plan, and I see that there are two, like two flat top features. Oh, okay. oh Is yeah, this two like, geos. Would you call that two separate geodes? Well, I would actually say that they're part of the same, uh, part of the same hot spot. Oh, but again, there? that just one like that makes me wonder which one and what are the time differences that both of them formed mm. so i know i wonder where the previous dive was i wonder if it was on that geo right next to the one yeah. that we're on because that would make sense why we would want rocks from this sample the site because we don't know what time they formed yeah i see that it says uh we explored a steep wall oh, on the southwest is it, side. Oh, yeah. See, that's a totally... I see. Is it where that white dot is? Mm, on our... Probably. I think there's... there's yes, a, yes. I see where it says previous dive. Yeah. So, this is perfect because it's just a completely different side of it. So, steep yeah, wall. it is good that we have... We're going to get a rock, rock samples from this. Mm. The more we have on both of these geos that are probably... Looks like we've got a pretty steep wall. Mm -hmm. The Can better. Can you just wag a little to one side to give us an idea of the slope? Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Oh, oh wow, my yeah. god. We are rock climbing. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a pali in Hawaiian, like a cliff edge. I love that. Malia, can you review with me? We learned the Hawaiian word for a seamount. Seamount, yes. So it's Mauna Kai. Mauna Kai. Mauna meaning a mountain. So if any of you are familiar with Hawaiian mountains, of uh, Mauna oh, Kea, no, Mauna Loa. Can we zoom in on that elongated feature? Oh, oh wait, look. Uh, more interested in the long feature right here. What is that? Dead, uh, sp Yeah, it looks like a, a bone? dead... Yeah. No, it's a dead, uh, fallen over, like, uh... Coral? Sponge. It looks thing. like it's still attached, though. You take a quick zoom there? Yep. Go I on think in. the attachment point fell over, no. Oh, it's a sponge. This is a sponge that fell over, I believe. Uh, look at... Look at that. It looks yeah. like it was a piece of a lot larger one. I wonder... That's right. No, that's lovely. a huge sponge. And look, there's that other, like, green little dot. Huh. The sea star up to the left somewhere. There we go. Yeah. Cool. Oh. Cool feature here. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You guys see him more off in the distance, too. Oh, and hey, look here at we this. go. Yeah. Oh, look, there's a starfish on that one. Maybe you can move your water bottle. Oh, yeah. Is there any and this way one, too. Can <laughs> gravitate towards those um, elongated with like, the sponges on the right? Ooh. Yeah. Do you want to stop here? Uh, it's up to science. I don't know. Science, do you want to pause at this? Um, look this at this like stuff? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Pause, pause here. Okay. Looks like you haven't seen much like this. Bridge it might nap. even be good for a miskin. What do you guys think? Yeah. I would actually, um, there's a lot more behind it too. We can kind of pirouette over there. All stop, please. We can start from going from left to right, I think. That's sure. good. For the Niskin, do we need to be like over it or is it just near it fine? Um, close as we can get without damaging us or it. Um, someone in the chat is recommending that maybe those spots we saw earlier was an encrusting sponge. Oh. Encrusting sponge. That's my thought too. Possibly some kind of egg casing by leaning sponge. Cool. Can we get a zoom in on that sponge? 
Yeah. Yep. Yeah. On this? Yes. This is Go for zoom in. Gone in. There's a crinoid on it. Whoa. Rock. A little starfish. Ooh. It's one of the, it's a cap sponge. Let me see if I can get an ID. This is awesome. Oh, no, the shrimp. 